Hi and welcome. So today we're going to talk about Hashcat. It is advanced password recovery or you would call it a way to crack a password, right? That is probably why you're here. How would you crack a password using Hashcat? So we're going to talk about Hashcat and in many occasions people just use it for stuff like try hack me or hack the box and stuff like that because in reality you don't really go ahead and get your hands on a hash that easy. But of course, in hacking scenarios and different you know areas like that, it is a good idea to know how to actually do a hash crack using Hashcat. Now, there are many different programs out there that can do stuff like this, but Hashcat is one of the better ones that I know. And really, you know, the one that I only use. Also, something sometimes use John the River, but that is for different kind of things than Hashcat, in my opinion. So let's get straight into an example. I have a terminal ready here with a file called hashes.txt. Inside that file, I just, you know, for the sake of the video and doesn't take too long, I just did five MD5 strings. Now, I'm not. I want to stress this that if you don't have the salt and if the strings are salted you most likely will not you know guess this because it is not just a md5 uh, hash of a particular clear text string it is looking like this so if you have a hash function you say salt plus whatever string in this occasion could be called password or is it password.salt or how is it formed? So in this particular case, all the hashes we have is just the password, they're not salted. Now, in all scenarios, and I would like to say more or less all scenarios, whenever you have to have a hash, it's probably salted, right? And there are more things you can do than just salt. There's also something called pepper, and pepper is something extra just on the top of it that could be stored in hardware or in bad occasions in the source code or some other place you can pull it or just some from a secure api something like that okay so in this particular example we only md5 hash the password and please be bear in mind that md5 is not a safe algorithm to use to hash a password it has been proven to be too easy to crack because there's so many databases containing different kind of passwords but if you use MD5 with salt and stuff like that, you know, it's pretty, still pretty good. However, it's just not used that much anymore and I wouldn't, wouldn't really recommend it at all. So just to keep in mind that if you don't have the salt and you have some password, you're going to have a really long time trying to guess. Of course, it can you can do it in, in, in the long run, but it's going to take many, 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 many years, I guess. So well, let's just get straight away using hashcat cracking these passwords now you can use hashcat just to crack a single string and it's possible to store a string in a file you can um, put the string directly into the command line you know and eh. so what I did I just put this into file called hashes and I cat it out right here you can see four different you know uh, hashes that are all md5 before we use the uh, hashcat program let's go ahead and look at the official hashcat.net website. Now I'm on the uh, example hashes page where we can see different kind of hash modes we can start it up with. So if we just scroll through this, I'm gonna use the mouse here and just go down, you see there's a lot of different type of hashes you can choose from. And in this particular case, we're gonna choose the hash mode of zero. So we're gonna tell the hashcat program that we're gonna crack MD5 hashes. So it will use that algorithm to try and you know hash other strings and then guess it. But what is brute force? How is a brute force attack really happening and how does this really work? So I'm gonna open up paint. The one and only trusted program that I can do for drawings. There we go. This is paint. So what really happens is that you take whatever clear text string you have clear text string of course that will be your password and then you really just gonna you know put that down 
into a md5 function and that's going to output to you your hash all right and when you have that hash what you're going to do is compare that to the hash that you want to crack so this is the obtained hash and if they those two hashes are equal you guessed it so brute forcing is really just guessing you're supplying the clear text in an n amount so you don't really know how many clear text strings there are it could be all from one to one million different trying to tries so this phase here is an iterative phase that goes all the way from here to here as many times in n amount of times that we have clear text strings so this can be a timely con data consumable ram consumable processor power graphic card power consumable process because different kind of programs can utilize your graphic card and some cannot some people even write their own root faults in python and you know it's, it's good if you do it but writing your own root faults in python is just gonna you know not use your graphic card so let's go ahead and just look at the the hashcat program now and go back to the actual terminal and the other tab i have i outputted the help for hashcat it is right here so hashcat dash h and you get the actual options for it. And what we're gonna use is different kind of, you know, uh, we're gonna use a M, so we're gonna use the hash type. And the example given is thousand, we're gonna use the one called zero because the uh, hash type or the mode, or we're gonna call that, is um, MD5. Going back here, you can see they call it hash mode, hash types, they are generic hash types, so the one is zero. So basically we're gonna go ahead and type dash m0 and we're gonna use the attack mode. I know the words are important, but it's the way they write it. The attack mode could also be written like that. We're gonna use tag a or dash a and that's gonna be zero. Now they give an example of number three. Now if you scroll down, you can see it says C reference below. I'm gonna scroll down to the reference below and you will see that they give a reference for the attack modes right here. It's called zero, it's a straight um, straight mode, which is also called the word list mode. Now, the word list mode is the mode that we're gonna use a word list, the exact same way that I explained in the uh, paint drawing. So we're gonna take one password, hash it, compare to the one we have, are those two, are those two equal? If they're equal, then we brute forced in a way or we guessed it now don't be you know alarmed by the word brute force here it is a bit different but we're going to stick to the one called straight because it is the one we're going to use in most occasions it is testing our hash against a commonly known list of passwords so let's go ahead and go to the other tab here and type hashcat m we're going to use zero for the md5 and A is also zero because we're going to use a dictionary attack and we're going to output whatever um, whatever uh, results we get from the file in a file called, let's call it guest hashes.txt, hashes, hashes. <laughs> and then we're going to supply the word list called hashes.txt. And then we're going to supply the word list in user share word list and I use the one called Rockview. Now, if you don't know where your word list are, you could go, let me just clear this here and write locate word list. And then in Linux, you're going to get a lot of, you know, different kind of word list here. Now, most of these are in user share. And the one we're gonna also you can download um, Seclist by the way you can download that, but the one called Rockio is gonna be in Linux Kali as a default one. So if you're gonna find that, you can find locate Rockio, 
and you'll notice the very first one here is called user web way in wordless writer text um, the one what one we're using is just down below here it's called user share word list rock you and you could probably ask what's the difference between these kind of you know word list you know I uh, Probably gonna have to look at the different web pages for sec list and stuff like that. But having a good word list is the way to go. So that is the way you locate it. Now that we did that, we're just gonna press enter, and you're gonna see Hashcat is working and doing its job, depending on the version you have of it and you know what kind of other arguments you put. Um, it could the, the output could be a bit different here. So. Um, so basically, it's just uh, trying different kind of ha well, hashes and, and combinations. And it kind of already said what well, I'm done now. And you can see that it took like uh, no, no time at all. It was really fast. Uh, so what we're going to do now is go ahead and do a cat. So cracked hashes. Uh, guest, I called it the name. Guest hashes and you can see that it outputted the hash with a colon and the password and only for the sake of this video I put in some easy passwords called password, password123, and horse and goat so it kind of just guessed them and this is the way you could use hashcat um, I recommend use hashcat a lot um, because you can also utilize your graphic card and in this particular example, I only use the kernel because I'm running on a virtual machine. And if my memory not is mistaken, Hashcat is not going to um, use the graphic card unless it runs on some native um, operating system, which this is not. So it was really fast. It uh, got some statistics you can read if you want to do that compared to your own computer. I don't really think too much about it. I just run it because when you're going to crack some hashes, it is just the actual waiting you're gonna do. So it'll take one day or five days, who cares? You will crack and get the passwords, right? So that's it for this video, how to use Hashcat, hoping you use for something. Gonna see you again online. Have a nice day.